when I was a boy, I grew up with horses and sheep. And I remember when the sheep would have their offspring, occasionally there'd be one or two rejected by the mother. And we would adopt them and feed them by bottle, but I was always so perplexed to why this would happen. Why would a mother give up her children when there seems to be no reason why she can't keep them? And I'm sure there's some who are nodding their heads saying, yeah, that, that's how it works sometimes. In the animal kingdom, nature can be cruel. But would it be a stretch to think that we as humans share that trait as well? And while parenting may be instinctual by nature, adoption, adopting that child into your family may not always be a guarantee. And while it may not be as common, it's still a natural process, meaning adoption is necessary. Every time an offspring is born, so is the need for a mommy or a daddy or both, a family. I was adopted. I was, a, I was an orphan, and I was adopted by an American family. The year was 1975. It was at the tail end of the Vietnam War, and there was this program called Operation Baby Lift, whose purpose was to get as many kids out of the country before communism took over. The plane I was put on, a C-5A Galaxy, crashed shortly after departing the Tan Sun Nu Airport on April 4th, 1975. And what happened was the plane came down, skidded for a quarter mile, became airborne again for a half a mile, and finally crashed into four pieces. 138 passengers were killed on that plane. I, I am one of the survivors. I, I'm a lucky kid. Now, obviously I made it to the United States and I was adopted by Francis and Janet McGuire. I was not unscathed by the time they got me. I had pus coming out of my right ear, which resulted in a hearing loss. I, had, I was growing brown and yellow teeth. I was malnourished. Can you imagine the thoughts running through my parents' minds when they unwrapped me. I was not perfect right out of the box. My dad, he was an orthodontist. Mom, she was a stay-at-home mom at the time. They had three children. The one closest in age to me is four years older. My dad would later joke, one day, Jana went out to look for kitchen cabinets and came home with Kevin. <laughs> right? That's still, uh, that's still one of his running jokes uh, archived under the showstoppers, really, really funny daddy jokes. How do we define adoption? My guess is that it's a bit of the old mixed with its ongoing evolution to where it needs to be. I think we can agree that Adoption inherits a negative connotation or two. Back in 1975, if you were considering adoption, some would look on and assume that there must be something wrong with you because why else would you want to adopt somebody else's kid? Adoption was kind of that plan B for if something were to go wrong and adoption was the consolation prize or a charity case. It's not a stretch to think that there are a number of things right out of the gate that make the choice to adopt an already uphill climb and that you're not starting or playing on the same equal playing fields. I would like for you to suspend your disbelief. Play along with me for a moment. I would like to propose a new definition to adoption. Now, there is adoption in the legal sense that we recognize it in society, but what if there's another process to adoption that happens? 
and it happens between the parent and the child, and it happens after the birth. And it's when you make the choice to bring this child home. And, when, and whether or not you have cognitively made the choice to adopt, you have indeed adopted this child. Now, you may have made that choice nine and a half months prior and have solidified the adoption before the baby was even born. But you'd made the choice to not only give birth to this child, but also to adopt this child as your own. Every baby that is born needs somebody to pick him. Now, if you were lucky enough to have gone home with the parents who have given birth to you, great! That is the more common way. But it's not the superior way. Can we remove the imaginary fence be between families of same DNA and families of different DNA? Maybe the adoption process isn't the rarity. It's not just for the poor and the broken and the misfortune. Giving birth to a child makes you the birth mom. Choosing that child, bringing that child into your home, that is where the adoption of this birth child occurs. Why is this mental shift so important? Well, <clears throat> If I were to say a woman gave birth to a child and she took the child home and she loved the child, you'd say, no, duh. Of course she loves the child. It's, it's, it's her kid. Can we give that same no, duh, validity to the parents raising children of different DNA? Because the no, duh sentiment isn't because of the DNA part. It's because of the adoption process that happens after the DNA part. And I get it. DNA can play a major role in whether one will or will not love a child. But while one may need common DNA to love for real, it isn't the necessary ingredient to love for real. So, the next time you may run into a family with adoption, before you make note of the obvious differences, maybe remember what adoption is, and what it's all about, what it means. After all, it's just another kid who needed someone to choose him. Just like I needed somebody to choose me. Just like you needed somebody to choose you. If we can agree that love is the binding ingredient that makes a family, not DNA, then we can help remove the imaginary fence and just see families. Families. Let me leave you with two ways we can help possibly move the needle toward, towards a healthier outlook on adoption. The first one are to parents who have already adopted, but it's not exclusive to just them. Love, love. And as trite and as simple as that may sound, those who share experience would agree it's not so simple. Love, and more importantly, love unapologetically. Now, my mom, she really rooted for the underdog. She really had a heart for those who are broken, exhibit A. 
Exhibit A. And at one point you had a lot of dogs, and they were the kind of dogs that you could not give away for free. And it got to the point where her adult children, her nieces and her nephews were all like, Ma, what are you gonna do with all these dogs? You gotta do something with all these dogs. And my mom would generally reply with something like, well, if you don't like it, you don't have to come to her own family. And you know how beautiful that is? I got to witness the strength and commitment and resolve my mom has for those she chooses to adopt. Never wavering, not even when faced with ridicule from her own family. No apologies, no excuses, just leave it or lump it. And whatever mud was slung her way for adopting a foreign baby from the country we were just at war with at the time, brutal, brutal. My mom loved unapologetically to all looking on, from her children down to her dogs, my mom loved unapologetically. The second way we can help move this needle has to do with you. We, as a society, play a role for the ease of families with adoption to assimilate and to be viewed upon as what they are. Peers. Their peers. What if we celebrated adoption like we celebrate giving birth? What if we looked at one's choice to give their child up for adoption not as a reflection of their lack of responsibility, but celebrated as a very responsible and valid choice. What if we could let go of our negative thoughts and taboos about adoption? And what if we could just look at adoption as the natural process? In 1975, the taboo was me. And while adopting a brown baby may be placed on a lower rung of the ladder of, society, of severity by today's standards, the ideal family unit versus manifestation of anything other than that ideal, that resistance remains the same. Single parent adoptions, same sex couple adoptions. Can we accept that all you need is love? Let's make the steps to becoming a world where the adoption process is the only thing necessary for us as a society to cheer that family on as we would any other family unit. Now, I'm standing here today because of my ma. She passed away in January of 2021. She lost the battle with Lou Gehrig's disease. A very undeserving end to such a lovely woman. And I was, I was able to be there to, to hold the hand that once held little broken, not perfect, right out of the box Kevin. I was lucky enough to have lived through a plane crash. I was lucky enough to be adopted I was even lucky enough to be there with Ma 
when she was the broken one and say, thank you. To say, I love you. And to say goodbye. For those who are considering adoption, thank you. Thank you. There's a kid that needs you. For those who have already adopted, thank you. Thank you. We need you. We're cheering you on. And I would like to thank my mom, Janet L. McGuire. Thank you, Ma, for making the choice to choose me. I was sure lucky enough to have a Ma like you. Raise your hand if you've ever had a mom or dad. Just raise your hand. And if you're, if you're looking through a TV screen or you're looking on your phone, mm, I'm on the bus, I got a mom, I get it. It's kind of, but if you just show of hands. Okay, thank you. Looks like you're lucky kids too. I'll tell you what. If you happen to run into another lucky kid, send them good vibes. Cheer them on. It was really nice to meet all of you. I'm a lucky kid too. Thank you.